Hey guys, today I'm going to walk through the steps on how to add IP security cameras to the camera management software Blue Iris. We'll chat about camera protocols, network configurations, and options to consider in Blue Iris when adding your cameras. I have three cameras outside all set up and ready to be added. I'll show you how to get their IP addresses and add them to Blue Iris. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Blue Iris. In short, it's PC software allowing centralized recording and playback of multiple brands of IP security cameras. Do check out my video where I talk about the specifications of my dedicated machine and my other video on my top Blue Iris performance tweaks. Here's what we're covering today. Before we add a camera to Blue Iris, we're going to chat about compatibility. What makes a camera eligible to be used with Blue Iris? Then we're going to look at what's required from a network configuration or infrastructure point of view to connect the camera with Blue Iris. Then the real fun begins. I'm going to show you a bunch of methods to find the camera's IP address so we can add it to the software. To provide a good understanding of the process today, we're going to add three cameras. One from Hikvision, then one from Reolink, and then a PTZ from Vicky Lin. Blue Iris can control the pan, tilt, and zoom functions, so I'm excited to show you how that works too. So starting off, let's talk about compatibility. Not all security cameras will work with Blue Iris. When purchasing a camera, there are a couple of protocols and standards to look for. Cameras, including video doorbells that advertise as having RTSP or real-time streaming protocol or being ONVIF compliant, they should have no issues with Blue Iris. In some cases, like in these examples, the specs will call out these compatibilities. An NVR or network video recorder may also have ONVIF or RTSP abilities. So yes, these would also work with Blue Iris, but more on that shortly. It's also important to note that certain cameras do not have the ability to continuously stream footage. So a tool like Blue Iris cannot be used with these devices. In particular, I'm thinking about battery operated cameras, which are mostly inactive unless motion is detected. So for obvious reasons, if they're streaming video for a long period of time, the battery would be unable to keep up with this and would shortly run out of juice. Up next, we're going to explore what is required from a network configuration to connect an IP camera with Blue Iris. As long as the PC with Blue Iris on it is on the same local network as the IP camera, there should be no issues. If the cameras are, however, connected to an NVR or a DVR, and that recorder does not support ONVIF or RTSP, then the PC with Blue Iris on it will have issues accessing those cameras. Here is a visual to better explain what I mean. Here, the router or modem is connected to a PoE switch. This is the PC right here with Blue Iris on it. And if we add some compatible cameras to the switch, Blue Iris will pick these up, no problem. So let's next add an NVR and a few cameras connected to it. If the NVR supports ONVIF or RTSP, then the Blue Iris machine will see the cameras. It's important to note that the PC will see these cameras in this situation, but may have limited access to the functionalities of those cameras, depending on the camera brands. As you can see here, I'm using a Reolink NVR in my example, but their NVRs do not have ONVIF or RTSP enabled, but their cameras do. Since the cameras are behind the NVR, the NVR will not allow the cameras access to the network using ONVIF or the RTSP ports. Up next, we're going to add the camera to Blue Iris. Let's start off with the SickVision camera. To add the camera to Blue Iris, use the plus button in the upper right hand corner or right click anywhere and select add new camera. Let's give it a name. In this case, we'll call it back deck and a short name, which I'll use BD. Now the short name is actually used as a prefix in the camera's storage file name. If the camera has a mic, you can select this first box. I'm going to disable motion detection because I'm going to be recording continuously. And I'm going to select direct to disc as a performance benefit. So the incoming footage is left raw and not encoded. On my i7 processor, turning on this option has saved me about one to 2% of utilization per security camera. Click OK. Next, you're going to need the camera's IP address on the internal network. Let's look at a few methods to find it. So first off, if you click the Find Inspect button with the IP address field blank, 
you'll be presented with a list of IP cameras on the network. This is the camera right here that I'm after, which ends in .97. If I click OK, the camera will be added, but it will be using a generic configuration, which is fine, but this camera has a more complex configuration on my network, and it may not add correctly. I would rather use this option to find the IP address only, and use this feature to fully add a camera if it were a generic RTSP or ONVIF camera not found in the list of supported brands. You can also find a camera's IP address by looking at the network details for the camera on its app. Now, if you don't have that option, some brands of cameras have PC utilities which will scan your network for their brands of cameras. Here are all my Hikvision cameras, and number five is the one that I want. And if any of that is not an option, you could use a network IP identification app like Fing, which is free. Also, if there is an IP address written on the camera's box, this might work, but it's not a guarantee as your router may change this setting. Let's move on and add the camera's credentials. So now we're going to select Hikvision from the list of brands from the dropdown. And when I bounce over to the camera's internal web interface, I know that this camera uses an RTSP port of 977. So we're going to add that right here. Let's hit OK and move on. There is nothing here on the video tab you absolutely need to adjust at this point, but do notice the frame rate at which you want Blue Iris to use. The camera streams at a given frame rate, which can be configured on the camera's app or web user interface. In this scenario, the camera is streaming at a maximum of 10 frames per second. If the maximum rate in Blue Iris is set higher, it will use the value from the camera as long as it's not over 30. If the max rate is set to lower, like 6, then our Blue Iris Live View and recordings will be at that maximum value of 6. This is a performance option for if you have several cameras. Moving along to the trigger tab, motion recording is turned off. I normally don't use this and just record 24-7. Speaking of which, over here on the record tab, let's set this to all the time or continuous. For combined or cut video, it's a personal thing, but I like to keep my footage files relatively small so I can search through them quite quickly. I'll set mine to 2 hours and 4 gigs. This means my 2 hour files will appear in chronological order in the clip window, and it will make searching through them pretty quick in 2 hour increments. For record dual streams, basically it allows you to record a lower quality stream for the camera in addition to the mainstream and it makes searching through the footage a lot faster. I didn't configure a second video stream here for this camera, and I don't usually use this feature. And lastly, we're going to complete the addition by clicking OK. So adding the Hikvision camera was pretty seamless. We're going to do the same thing now with a Reolink camera and then a generic ONVIF camera. First off, we're going to click Add a Camera, give it a name, and click Yes for a mic, since this one does support audio, and select direct to disk. I found the IP address in the app, so I'm going to use that. And now I'm going to add the credentials. It's a Reolink branded camera, so I'll select that. Now I'm going to lower the frame rate. The current setting on the camera is set to stream at 30, but I'm going to tell Blue Iris to stream lower, and we're going to set that to 10. On the record tab, we're going to do the same thing, set that to continuous, and I'm going to update eight hours to two. And that's it, done. And lastly, we have one more example. We're going to add a generic ONVIF camera with PTZ abilities. Let's burn through this pretty quick. Again, we're going to start off, add a camera, give it a name, yes for a mic, direct to disk, get the IP address and add that here, and the credentials. This time we're going to use the find inspect feature in Blue Iris, so it'll find the camera and then populate the rest of the data below. I'm going to match the frame rate here as to what the camera is streaming, which is 20 frames per second. This will keep the footage nice and smooth, especially when I'm using the PTZ controls. I will have to keep in mind though that this will have a small impact on the CPU performance. 
same settings here on the record tab, update the eight to two, and we're done. And since this is a PTZ camera, we can control the camera using the arrows and zoom feature. I'll fast forward this here, but you can see the camera moving around and zooming in and out as I play with the buttons. There is a little bit of lag here in comparison to using the camera's web user interface. If I double click this window, the camera will be full screen and the mouse icon will change to different controls depending on its location on the screen. I'll fast forward through this here, play around a little bit. It's a pretty cool feature that you can control the PTZ features using Blue Iris. All right, guys, that's how you add security cameras in Blue Iris. We touched on what's required from a protocol and standards point of view and some network architecture requirements. I hope this clarifies the process of finding the camera's IP address and adding different brands of cameras. Links for the 15 day trial are in my description, along with some of the cameras used here today. Lastly, please show your support with a like and subscribe for more home tech DIY projects you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.